<laughs> we know where to find him. Um, okay, well, we can get started then, right? We and, can... uh, John Rushton just sent me an email. I'll just I'll forward it to everybody after the meeting. Just uh, says thanks and etc. So, where is he moving to? You know? He moved, um, I guess he's just over the county line. He's oh. just over into Guilford County. And he was reapplying for a second term. And he realized that his address didn't meet the criteria. <laughs> so, oh, OK. Uh, so that was that. Well, if we need, do we need someone from, will we need someone from the county? He may be able to. to I don't know how much was left on his term, but it must have been a fair amount. Yeah, so we do have one vacancy in the county. We have a vacancy in the city. And Cliff Dosel was actually on the city council agenda last night. So he uh, he may have been appointed. I wasn't at the meeting. So I'll have to check into that. And uh, hopefully he was He, he was, was He was appointed. Proved. This is Kevin Mundy. I was um, at the meeting last night and voted, and I'm just I'm listening, listening in, you guys. This is just part of my orientation, um, and and I won't pop in. I'm just going to listen, but I did want to just confirm that he he was uh, unanimously approved at last night's meeting. Oh, fantastic! Great. Uh, this is Councilmember Mundy. He's uh, the council member for the Southwest Ward. So welcome yep. to our meeting. Thank, Thank you, for you. And I know I know several names and faces and some good friends in this group. Hey, so good yeah. to see you all. Great to see you, Kevin. Thanks for being here. Absolutely yeah. my pleasure. You're, you're very welcome to listen in. Um, well, um, Kelly, we can get the meeting started since we do have a lot to do. Um, the first um, thing we usually do in our meetings, um, uh, we have some visitors here, so just to, relax and we'll sort of go through, we have some things that we go through. And the first is to just, uh, we're just gonna go around and identify for the recording, which you got your recording on there yet, Kelly? Yeah. Okay, we're gonna just identify who is here. And Kelly, you can sort of call out the uh, roll call. I'll start on the city side, India Beal. Here. David Finn. Here. Dara Silver. Here. Betsy Towns. Here. Elizabeth Rapetti. Here. Uh, Owens Daniels, are you here? Um, Jane Dabb. Here. And Jason Thiel. He's my son, and now he's, now he's missing. So hopefully he'll be back. <laughs> OK. Um, so we are called to order. Okay, now our first order of business is, as usual, the approval of the minutes from our last session. And hopefully you've had a chance to look at those and uh, we're, then we would be ready to approve them. Do I have a motion to approve of the minutes? So moved. Okay, that was? Dara. Dara, okay. Thank you, Dara, second? Is there a second? Second. Oh. Is it the second? I think Jane beat me. <laughs> No. Well, anyway, second. So all in favor, we can just go around and Kelly can roll again. Okay, um, I'll, just, I'll just, instead of doing uh, person by person, we can just say all approve. Aye. 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 Any, Aye. any objections? Okay. Uh, okay. That's unanimous. Um, I don't know if we want to give uh, Jason a chance to get here. Um, I know India has to run before, run around 2.30, and she invited um, Donovan Livingston to the meeting. Um, you two want to talk about um, your possible project? Yeah, if we can, go ahead and kind of discuss it. That'd be great. Donovan, um, I'm actually going to let Donovan okay. is, that, is that okay yeah. with everybody? Just just because India is on a yeah. tight timeline. I don't want to take up too much of your time. Uh, Joy and I send our regards. Happy New Year, family. 
Um, it's nice to see a couple familiar faces in the group, but uh, my name is Donovan Livingston. I am the Assistant Dean of the Office of University Collaborations at Wake Forest and Professor in the Education Department. Um, briefly, uh, our office is uh, uh, currently- Hey, Donovan, can you, can you turn your volume up a little bit? I can, I can hear you, but not as loud as, yeah. My bad, is that better? Maybe, can it get a little louder? Maybe just get closer to your computer if that's possible. How's that? Is that better? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Uh, so, as I was saying in, a, in uh, my work in the provost office, we are currently partnered with the new museum in New York City uh, to do a year long initiative called Idea City. It's essentially um, a collaborative program that celebrates um, the idea that arts and culture are essential to the vitality of a city. And Winston Salem is a partner city, um, much like um, cities the Idea City program has been a part of in the past, which includes everything from Athens and Istanbul to New York, New Orleans, you name it. So it's lovely to have Winston Salem um, mentioned within that uh, key group. And in doing uh, uh, programming throughout this year, um, we've been fortunate enough to work with some amazing artists and entrepreneurs who are doing um, projects that have social justice, um, social justice uh, uh, attributes and undertones. And one of the groups that sort of stood out, they were recently um, selected as a Forbes 30 Under 30 uh, uh, duo um, for, for their education innovation. Um, they're called Movers and Shakers. Essentially what they do, they create augmented reality uh, historical monuments um, that align with school curriculum um, that can be placed and introduced in different parts of different cities as a means of engaging um, uh, new audiences and sort of historical narratives, um, historical narratives that have for uh, many reasons been uh, sort of uh, underrepresented and undervalued. And so um, a lot of what they are, uh, th their premise is that there's roughly 5,100 monuments to people in the United States. Only about 394 of those monuments are dedicated to women and something like over 700 are dedicated to Confederate figures, right? And so it's this idea that um, by taking um, augmented reality, using aug augmented reality uh, technology, we can uh, create, invent, and install monuments to historically underrepresented groups that typically get left out of our historical narratives that we typically hear in school. So they've uh, created an app called Unsung that uh, sort of installs these, creates a digital archive for these monuments to um, BIPOC individuals, uh, folks who identify as LGBTQ. Um, just, it's a, it's a great uh, opportunity for us as a city to give them a new landscape upon which to create their, their uh, technology. And so uh, we are partnered with them uh, through April. They plan on attending our Idea City uh, uh, culminating event in April. Um, what they hope to do is prototype uh, their version of Unsung uh, featuring Winston-Salem Unsung Heroes. Um, and so essentially what this group can be helpful with thinking about and what India is sort of um, uh, 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 committed to helping us with is helping us think of um, who are those who are those unsung voices, unsung heroes in Winston-Salem that are, you know, um, uh, people of color, uh, people from the LGBTQ community, uh, immigrants, uh, those types of individuals who, um, for various reasons, aren't typically talked about in schools. The idea is also to introduce students to a new uh, cadre of historical figures that they can then see themselves reflected in uh, these historical narratives. So um, I, they can talk to it, uh, speak to it better than I can as far as the technology goes, but to give you a sense of the timeline, we'll be spending the first uh, month of the year, we'll be spending January sort of meeting with them, consulting. There's a group of uh, teachers, visual artists, um, and other community members who will be guiding the group in their uh, exploration of Winston-Salem historical figures. Um, they'll spend February sort of testing and building the, 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 the app. March will be prototyping and working out kinks, and then the actual launch will happen in mid-April. And so, again, this group being uh, 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 committed to public art uh, is definitely somebody that we wanted to get involved and know about what was going on. So if I'll open it up for questions at this time. But again, I appreciate you for giving me enjoy <laughs> this space to uh, <laughs> address y'all this afternoon. Are there any questions about anything? Um, and I could drop a bunch of links to um, our Idea City uh, website, as well as Movers and Shakers, uh, some recent articles and TED Talks that they've done, um, so you could get a sense of their work and how it's been talked about uh, from Forbes all the way to uh, New York City.
So Jonathan, you were telling me that, and, and let me know if you're still open to it, that you're still looking for people to join uh, in order. So Donovan's looking for people who are interested in being a part of this kind of augmented reality, um, creating monuments in Winston-Salem that represent uh, the unsung heroes here in the city. And so as a, um, I guess, as a, a member of this committee, you'll have the opportunity to provide your own insight and knowledge towards maybe places or individuals that you think um, monuments should be placed. But more importantly, um, focusing on different aspects of the city that you think are, are important um, for this group to know as they come in and create this kind of augmented reality here in Winston-Salem. So the reason I invited Donovan is because I feel like this is a group of really smart folks, you know, <laughs> and, and uh, you know, I'm actually kind of recruiting to see if there's any, I know we all are kind of stretched thin, but um, I thought it was just a really fun and kind of exciting and innovative um, idea. And so I'm joining the committee, but I was reaching out to see if anybody else would be interested in joining um, the committee. And maybe Donovan, if you could let us know what the time requirements are, because that's, you know. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for that, India. I, I think um, as far, uh, far as I know, we'll probably meet every two or three weeks just to check in with um, uh, Glenn Idris and Micah, who are the uh, the trifecta that run movers and shakers, we'll meet with them to just to consult and check in um, about every three weeks or so. Our first meeting will be on Thursday. Give me one second. That first meeting is going to be on Thursday at, at uh, 10 a.m. So if you're interested, I'll be happy to, again, send you uh, the Zoom information for that meeting um, uh, because, you know, again, we just wanted to make sure there was enough uh, representation from people across Winston-Salem who can you know, breathe life into this project because we really think it's going to be a, a, a great idea and a cool opportunity for kids that call this place home. Um, I, I'm not sure that everybody on our committee even knows what augmented reality is. I don't want to assume that that's something that people even know what that is. So um, could you explain a little bit more about that? I, I can do my best. Um, I, so augmented reality, it's a new term to me as well, but uh, if you all are familiar with Pokemon Go, for instance, right? It's this uh, idea that you can have an image of uh, an object um, and hold your phone up to, you can hold your phone up to a particular space and that object, although 3D, will appear in your phone as if it's right there in front of you. Um, that's the best way I can describe it. I'm a poet, that's as, that's as clear as I can <laughs> try to make it make sense, but um, it's a really cool idea. One of their uh, screenshots that Glenn and Idris often use in their slide decks is um, uh, Toussaint Le Overture standing in the middle of Columbus Circle um, in New York City, right? So it's this idea that you are using these monuments that are dedicated to persons of color, historically underrepresented populations, to disrupt those mainstream narratives that often uh, leave folks like us um, on the outside looking in. And I think th they do brilliant work. They partnered with uh, cities all across the country, and Winston-Salem is next on their list. And so I wanted to make sure that we had a broad scope of folks from this committee um, reflected in, in that group. And are they sponsored by the new museum? Yes, they are sponsored by the new museum. So if you if you're familiar with Winston Starts, um, they have a uh, the new museum runs an incubator uh, for creative entrepreneurs um, called New Inc. And they are uh, uh, members of a cohort from about two years ago at New Inc. And uh, their project, you know, it, it it was off to the races. So again, I'll drop uh, some information in the chat about Movers and Shakers, about Idea City, and uh, I'll also leave my contact information in case anyone has other questions. Questions. All right. Um, I see that Owens Daniels uh, has expressed an interest uh, in the chat, and Wendy Earl from SICA as well. So, um, yeah, I saw Betsy, did your hand go up, Betsy? Yeah, yeah, it did. Thank you. And good to see you, Donovan. And thanks. This is, it is a really exciting project. Um, and I too would love to be, I'm, as uh, everyone knows, I'm always uh, overly willing to join. But the project overlaps so beautifully with a couple of other projects that are happening in the city. And, you know, Kelly, I'm thinking that uh, our job of needing to seek out um, individuals, but also places and stories 
that are under told stories for the bus shelter project. Mm -hmm. um, seems like we might we might be able to um, tie those two projects together in the research phase, which needs to happen quickly anyway. So I can see um, that being a really valuable overlap. So love to be part of it, and thanks for bringing this to us. Really exciting. Well, it's definitely. Cool. Cool. That, that's so Donovan, I have a question that comes up. I mean, I, I would really love to be involved in it um, myself as well. So put me down on your list. Um, I mean, it seems to me like this is something that really requires a fair amount of research. Um, and so I'm just wondering what, how you're approaching it or how the group is approaching it. Um, you know, uh, will they, will the, you know, how is, how is it being done with, with people that are local, with people that are coming in from outside? Um, is it local? Is it, is how, what's the, is it tied to local um, people? Um, just curious about that, you know? Yes, I mean, so that's in part why I reached out to India. I knew she's from Winston-Salem and can artists and can speak uh, <clears throat> some untold stories here in the city. Uh, it's very important that we engage local folks um, as far as um, other representation. We have teachers um, who are from Winston-Salem who teach in middle and high school. Um, we have some other folks from, uh, we have Corey Walker from the new African-American Studies Department at Wake Forest, who's a native of Winston-Salem and, and can, or studies at Black History in Winston-Salem. Uh, Charlene Hunt, uh, I'm not sure if you're all familiar with Charlene, but she is a um, um, is going to be an, an indigenous artist who's going to be joining the group. So, um, we more local representation the better. Um, but as of right now, I think uh, our meeting on Thursday we'll talk more specifically about how we want to go about doing that research and making sure there's the right voices at the table. So that's something we're great. Doing. But thank you, David. Great, thanks. That sounds like sounds like such a great project. Yeah, excited about it. So. There are any more questions? Thank you for listening. I'm just gonna turn turn off my video, put her down, and drop <laughs> faces in the okay. chat. But just to recap, I have Owens. What's good, brother? It's good to see you again, man. Owens, Betsy, David, and there was one other person, Wendy. I think. Yeah, Wendy Earl from Sika. Got you. Got you. Thank you all so much. Okay. Thank you, Donovan. Thank you. Thanks for being here. Thanks for coming to the meeting. All right. Okay. Let's see where we are. Um, cool. Oh, that's really something to look forward to. Um, a couple of weeks ago, it seemed like we had, you know, a little bit of a space where there wasn't that much going on, but suddenly it seems like we've got this meeting in January. Whew, lots. And I uh, just saw that Cliff was on. I just saw there. Hey, Cliff, just welcome. Welcome to the committee. You yeah. haven't, you're not really a stranger to us because you've been so, done such great work with um, helping with the portrait project early on. And, and I'm, I'm really glad that you're, I think we're all really glad that you're on, on this, um, on the committee. So I, Kelly, is it right that we're going to talk about the uh, presence absence Project. Yes, that's our. That's next up on the agenda. Um, Betsy uh, is the project manager for this. It's outside of um, the Public Art Commission, but this this group received a grant um, and has been putting this project together. Owens is one of the artists, and they would like to use. Um, a county building. So the, so the best way for them to get that permission is to go through the Public Art Commission, who will uh, make a recommendation to the county commissioners. So you have a public art project application, and I'll let Betsy uh, talk about this project a little bit. Thank you, Kelly. And um, Jasmine Hoff is here with us as well. Jasmine has been doing the web design for the project, as well as a lot of communications. And um, Owens is the lead artist for the mural aspect of the project. So I, I won't go into too much detail because the materials are in front of you, but essentially about three years ago, um, a, we assembled a large group of people in Winston-Salem to ask questions about 
what stories needed to be told. So a whole lot of overlap with what Donovan Livingston has been sharing with us. And through community engagement, we landed on the story of the Catherine Bidding Reynolds Memorial Hospital, which had had such a huge impact on the black community and on the city as a nationally recognized hospital where nurses were trained and technicians were trained where doctors traveled to Winston-Salem to, to, to learn new techniques because of the, just the uh, reputation of excellence at that hospital. And in the city, there is a kind of, you know, history on the stick marker of KDB Reynolds, but there isn't a lot of general knowledge of the hospital and the impact it had. And as you were asking so many questions, certainly before COVID, but even more so during COVID about health equity and inequity, um, KDB, as it's known in the community, um, is such a landmark of health equity and healthcare excellence in the Black community. And because of uh, what we discovered through community-engaged research and collaboration with the Winston-Salem African American Archive, um, we landed on that as the story to be told. And we are currently um, creating a mural under the leadership of Owens which will capture um, kind of the, the retained memory of KDB in the, in the um, hands and eyes and faces of mostly women who trained there because so I guess women have the great fortune of longer lifespans. There are many more women trained at the hospital who remain alive. And we've conducted a lot of oral history interviews, continuing a practice of oral history gathering around the hospital that had been done by the Winston-Salem African American Archive. And um, under Jasmine's leadership, designing a website which captures some of that history. And we had originally proposed and received permission to hang the mural on um, the Winston-Salem uh, Mutual, the Winston Mutual Life Insurance Building. But as that building changed ownership, um, we have kind of lost the permission for that building. We still have permission to hang the mural on um, the Housing Authority building, Sunrise Towers, which is also on um, MLK Boulevard. But that building, because it is you know, an apartment building, people's homes, we feel concerned about hanging a mural there without really robust community engagement. And we just haven't landed on a great way to do community engagement um, during COVID. And so we're now um, looking at a site that we looked at early on, which is the, the place that when Katie, um, Katie B moved to a new location in 1969 and was there until 1972, and that's the Department of Health Services. And so we are now interested in having the mural on that building um, because of the strong historic ties, but also the ongoing connection to healthcare and health services in the city that that building represents. So we have a fully funded project and we have three years of collaboration of, and research. And now we're interested in finally securing a location that is very deeply meaningful. As I wrote in the, in the proposal, right across the street from the um, Lloyd Jordan Heritage Center at uh, the East Winston Branch Library, which is named after two of the doctors at KDB Reynolds. So lots of historical connections, lots of ties, and um, we're eager to proceed with the last phase of connection and celebration of this project and this story. And Owens, Owens and Jasmine are here. They might um, chime in on important aspects that I've missed or um, we're just glad to take questions too. Cliff has been involved with this project too. Thank you, Cliff, glad you're here. Glad to be here. Can, can you, uh, I was madly writing notes and answering texts because I'm in the middle of something, but um, well, can you rename, can you tell me again the name of the building that uh, we're yeah. thinking of, of using instead of? Yeah, and, um, and um, it, it, there is a photo of the exact site in the email that Kelly sent again this morning, but it's the Department of Social Services building. So it's um, the DHS entrance is actually on the opposite side. Um, but in a, in a much lower traffic area, a place that it wouldn't have as much vis visibility. So we're using the side that um, is visible from Martin Luther King Jr. Boulevard and that um, you know, has this connection to the, the library and the Heritage Center. Um, and I, I mean, I can project the photo or, or Kelly can share screen, whichever, if, um, if you'd like to see that location. 
Um, here, let me see. I'm about to, unfortunately, I have to jump off, but um, I just wanted to say that I had the opportunity to, to see this because I was one of the granting um, judges for your application. And I just want to tell you guys, it is beautiful. Owens did a amazing job on that mural. I mean, it is so breathtakingly stunning. And so I just hope that it's in a place where everybody in Winston-Salem can see it. Um, your application was, like I said, everyone loved it. So it wasn't a hard sell. And I hope this goes through smoothly. Um, but I just want to say congratulations. I don't know if I told you that, but it was such a wonderful application to review. So yeah. You, you didn't, India, and that's so meaningful to hear from you. Thank you so much. Can everybody say that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's nice. That's a nice, that's a nice place for it. And so that's the, that's the site where KDB was for three years until 1972 when um, hospitals were integrated, at which point um, there was a really marked change in access to, he to health care for the Black community that um, you know, we've learned so much about over the process of this, um, of the research for this project. Um, but it's still, this site still remains just like a, a site of hope and, um, and loss. So, I mean, the name present absence that came to us before we even landed on KDB Reynolds Hospital as the content for the project. It just feels like it's so, so metaphorically strong here too. No, that's, that's perfect. I can't think of a better place for it. This is really great. Um, what do you need from us today? Do we, do we need a vote of approval for this or our endorsement of this? Oh, what, yes. uh, Kelly and Betsy, do we need? You would um, I'd need your recommendation for approval uh, for for this project to use um, the the space that they're requesting, and I'll pass that on to to the county commissioners. Okay, um, I, I have a couple of questions. So, in terms of the folks that live in the building that frequent the building, um, how have you engaged with them? With, for this project, um, do they know what's going on, and is there a way that you've been able to talk with them about it? It's it's a great question, David, and and um and really because because of COVID, you know, we had really extensive engagement with the community to develop this project, and then we felt really strong about continuing on at Winston Mutual Life Insurance Building that also had so many historic reasons for the mural to be there because it wasn't really an, an active building. It was, it was simply central in the community. Then when we moved to Sunrise Towers, we also were excited about community engagement there, but that was in, in January and February of 2020, right before um, the kinds of community engagement that one, you know, one, that one typically thinks of would, were shut down. So at this point, we have not jumped into community engagement with the Department of Social Services, but we do have we, we do have plans for for doing that. Um, and it is a little bit, you know, it's it's not as robust as what we did going into the project in terms of the kind of sustained um, engagement with groups that we were doing prior to this. But the plan to take our um, to take aspects of the mural like like. Um, posters of the mural and postcards and to take some of the, um, the, you know, the website on iPads to be present and outdoors so that people can learn a little bit more about it and weigh in on it. So um, India mentioned seeing the mural and the beauty of the mural, but we are still really in that final design phase. So we haven't brought the design team back together and we haven't brought the community engagement team back together because we really want to secure the location before we go into that, you know, into that time consuming process of community engagement. And Jasmine, you might want to weigh in on other, uh, other um, aspects of our brainstorming around community engagement during COVID to answer David's question more fully. I, I think the only thing I can add is just that um, I think the intentionality of the location, this location, because of the history of it and moving away from 
the uh, Sunrise Towers, even though we have approval for it, is kind of part of our, how can we give voice to both history and people currently? And so we're hoping that, um, I want to mention that there's the library, the Malloy Library, there's a library that's, that honors some of the people who worked at the hospital is near, it's a little bit closer to this new location and sort of the ways that that tie in kind of brings, um, you know, people who work in this industry uh, are now engaged in a project that are, um, that is about the history of their field. And so that's something that sort of makes me excited about this new location, despite the hiccups that we've had before. Hmm. Kelly, this um, is Sarah. Do we know it, our county officials that are over that building, are they in favor? Can someone speak to that? Uh, I mean, the, that, uh, that kind of overlaps. Does that overlap with your question, David? Betsy, do you, could you answer that? Well, um, Kelly actually has been handling the communications more with the Department of, uh, with um, uh, Daryl and the city. And his, all of his questions have been kind of practical, but he's eager co to connect us with the department, the, you know, the leaders of, of uh, Department of Social Services so that we can engage with that community engagement process as we move forward. So we actually haven't had direct conversations with the county for the same reason that we haven't gone directly into community engagement at DSS because we really want to secure permission prior to going through, you know, going through that process. So in terms of the order of things, to answer your question and David's, we don't fully, you know, we haven't fully planned the conversations with uh, the community, and we haven't fully engaged with those at the county who oversee the project. Um, we've just checked off the, you know, the kind of practical boxes of can this can this mural be hung there physically, and you know what do we need to do to secure permission? And so, from Kelly's point of view, the starting point for securing permission and having those conversations with the county was to have the Public Art Commission, which is city and county, check it off. And then we would go forward with the conversations wow. with the county because we just didn't want to go back through the process of, of you know, really robust engagement until we were pretty sure that this was going to be feasible. Thanks, Betsy, uh, I, have a, I, I have a, a logistics question. You keep on talking about the um, mural will be hung there. Is it already created and is sitting somewhere or is Owens going to paint it onto the brick ha house? What's the logistics of that? Well, Owens can jump in too here, but we have done two preliminary designs for the two different locations. And so because the scale has changed each time we have changed location, we haven't gone all the way through final design. We have mm -hmm. designs of, uh, of a mural for the uh, Winston Mutual Life Insurance Building, which India was referring to. And we have a draft design for the long format for the tall Sunrise Towers. And now we have a conceptual design for this location. Um, so I can also post the website here, or I can screen share and show you the website that has you know, preliminary designs, but we haven't finalized, it's, this, you know, it's the same question. We don't wanna spend um, tens of Owens' hours finalizing the design until we know that, that it is gonna be this like wrapped around the, the side of the building that um, Kelly screen shared. You know, we just don't wanna go all the way through design. Hey, Bessie, I can speak to um, Elizabeth's question. Um, again, like Bessie said, you know, we have a conceptual idea of the new location. We've had designs for several locations before. But the main thing that happens with it, 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 it gets printed onto a vinyl surface. Oh, and that okay. vinyl surface gets anchored um, to the structure itself. And normally that anchor um, is insured, I'm not quite sure, but normally that's a structure, that's, that's a piece of artwork that's gonna last several years. We already have a company in mind that can do the work from the past efforts that we made before. And so right now, like Bessie said, now really it's just getting permission. It's not so much the design. The design is the easy part. It's just getting permission. And since we came up with this particular location, building the ideal that 
it is actually the child of the older building. Anybody that knows about Katie building, Katie, um, Katie, um, what is it to be invested? Katie B. building, it was not very far from there. And then as time went on and technology moved on and, and medical moved on, that DSS building is the new ADB building actually before it became DSS. So we came up with the idea that we would have his, um, the future facing history. And that's where I came up with that ideal. Plus you have the library, which is across the street, which also has information in history. Um, with DSS, we would like to have it interactive where you can use UR codes, where people can scan onto certain things and get information and they can go across the street to the library and get a lot of that information. So one of the projects that Donovan is talking about, we have been working on for almost a year. So, you know, we have a different project, but it's very similar in ideal and it's built around the idea that the community has a face and has a history and now it has a repository for that information and a central place they can go to it and they can interact with it. But that building um, in my, as an artist, is the ideal of me creating artwork that will, the, um, the present is facing the history and the history is looking back at its present. Because there's nothing there for the history to look back to right now because there's nothing there. But that mural would have that effect. Yeah, I, I think I, I really love the way that building will look with um, the mural on it. I can really picture that. And I think that's, I think it's a great site for it. it makes total, total, total yeah. sense. Um, I, I mean, and, and I, if you would like us to endorse that, I think we could probably, we could probably do that, right? We can, we can take a, make a, a statement of endorsement for the, for the project if if we can all after a discussion if we can agree on that that would be that would be a, a thing a step that would help you and i understand you've been moved from place to place with this and man i'll tell you they're welcome to public art you know it's like <laughs> public art in the pandemic so i I'm, i have a lot of sympathy and i think it's a it's a fantastic it's a great project and you've all worked so hard on it so um, I'm, I'm really, I'm in favor of, of, of endorsing your site. I, I will say though that my, my question was prompted by the, um, the shock that sometimes happens to employees who work in a building and, and, and come in the next day and they find something has changed. Someone has moved their cheese. And this is a famous sort of phenomenon where no matter how, how wonderful something is, if the cheese is moved, sometimes the people that actually inhabit that building or work there or have to look at it every day get freaked out by the fact that they have not been told about it. So I would say, I'm, I'm sure you're thinking about that. Well, I'm sure that I, can, do that. I can answer that for you. Being in the um, Leadership Winston-Salem project, my project is that building. So I'm actually in two projects. And you know, one of my tasks is the inventory and inspection of that building and talking to people in that building and you like you're right you know one of my you know if, if i was a, a client of that building and that mural was there i have no connection of what that mural and what that building have to do with each other because most people i'm generalizing don't know that that kdb building was the new technology and new home of kdb before kdb went to wake forest and baptist so um, you know, one of my things is while I'm in the Leadership Winston-Salem project, talking about another project, Winston-Salem Leadership Program, and I, and I chose that building and I chose that as my project, is to educate them on the historical significance so that they can educate the people on, wow, what a wonderful place that you're in. So when they look up at that mural, they have curiosity as well as pride. And, and I love the book, Who Moved My Cheese? So I, I, I got it. <laughs> well, I hope that kind of answers your question. I tell you, I think we should, I, I, I'm, I'm going to move that we uh, recommend this site for the um, Presence Absence Project, for the, K, the KB site for the Presence Absence Project. Can I do that, Kelly? 
Yes. Yes, you can. Second. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, we have a second. So if we uh, want to have a voice uh, voice vote. Yeah, go, um, the, I think that works. Do you want to roll call or just voice vote? A voice vote. Okay, all in favor say aye or raise your hand. Aye. Aye. <laughs> aye. Okay, no, any opposed? It's okay if you're, if, okay, all right. I don't see any objections. So, so that was an objection. I th was Jason, did, were, were you an objection? Oh no, I raised my hand. I was having, I've been having troubles, but I approve. <laughs> <laughs> Jason, welcome. Oh, by thank, the way. You. thank you, glad to be here. Okay, thank you, Kelly. Okay, thank, thank you all. Um, okay, the, the homework portion of your agenda <laughs> um, was the COVID-19 memorial discussion. Last, uh, last month, you discussed a COVID-19 memorial and decided to uh, bring in ideas of other memorials, uh, whether they're COVID-19 or um, or, any, or a memorial for anything um, to see if you wanted to move forward and how with a, with a Forsyth County COVID-19 memorial. Right, yeah. So did, did anybody do the homework? <laughs> Can we, how, if, if anybody did, do we have uh, screen sharing capabilities uh, here, Kelly? Um, for the I, uh, look at the bottom of your yeah. look at the bottom of your screen, and if you if you have a share screen button, you do. If you don't, I'll uh, I'll make you a co-host. Uh, just speak up. And let me know. Okay. I did a little bit. I wonder if anybody else has some images or has some comments or has some um, has some ideas that they want to share. It's a sharing time for all of us here. I don't have images, but I have done some homework and had some conversations with people, including with, um, well, in the past with Owens and more recently with um, Jasmine. So um, I have some ideas, but uh, David, I'd love to to see what you brought in in terms of images, and I'm eager to hear it too. Okay, but okay, that's good, Betsy, Jasmine, Owens, any, any, anyone, Sarah, <laughs> Jane, anybody have any things? So I think the the one of the things. Please just chime in if you have some some ideas you want to share. Okay, all right. Um, maybe just to get things going, okay, in terms of discussion. I don't know, I mean, this is a pretty wide open thing to have, the, to have this discussion start right now. We can do that, I think, and we can then see where we go from there. Um, and and you, all, you all will have some ideas, but if I can share my screen for a moment, I'll try doing that and see if I can pull up um, my, uh, what I, the, I, I found actually a, a website and see if I can get some of the images off of that, some of the, so, Can you all see? Can you all see that? General Google, but well, we're seeing Google. It's your browser. Okay. You see the uh, presentation there now? No? No, maybe you're sharing the wrong browser window. Okay. 
Okay. Anything there yet? Yes. Okay. Okay, so. Um, this is, if you can see that, this is one of the image, one of an image from Detroit. Oh. Sorry. These are images that I just collected this morning from the web. Um, and I'll, I'll have to figure out how I can go back and forth. Here, here we go. Okay, so let me start out by just pointing out, this is, India referred to this piece when she talked last time in our last, this is in Detroit, where the really nice, large photographic project was done. Um, and as a as a drive-by memorial, which of course makes a lot of sense while COVID is going on. So I'd love to hear your comments about these things that you can open up your microphones and, and we can chat about these things as I'm showing them, because I just was trying to get a handle on some of the things that have been done and then, and then what, you know the possibility we can do. This is in Los Angeles, where these uh, this this is a mural um, by an indigenous artist, uh, and this you can see that there was the these red roses that were made for it as a memorial, and they were placed in this on this screen over top of the mural, which is really kind of cool and kind of interesting. I don't know the scale of this or where it's located. So using an existing mural, in this case, um, just a different idea. But you'll see that this idea of repetition ha is happening a lot. Here's a, a, an artist, um, Su I guess her name is Susan Furstenberg in DC. She has, I think, by herself pretty much and with a group of people maybe, but by herself conceived of this placing white flags, one for every COVID death. So I don't think she's near the 350,000 right now. I guess she got up near 200,000 before it maybe got cold. Um, this, is a, this is a big array. It's uh, over near the RFK uh, parade grounds in Southeast um, DC. Um, you know, it has a lot in common with other kinds of sort of grand war memorials um, and graves, markers. Um, and then I just, the other, another thing that, so those are sort of images of traditional sorts of memorials in, in a way. But then there's the other kind of performance that has been happen happening at first spontaneously and then maybe a little bit more, um, you know, a little bit more planned sometimes with um, having periods of applause for healthcare workers. And that's something that I think we all heard about and knew about maybe first in New York, but then that has spread to other cities around the country. Um, and it'd be interesting to know if anybody would, would people getting vaccinations, you know. It's a kind of thing that's spontaneous and, um, but does get to be planned and, and therefore become something of a more formalized sort of activity um, going on. So I think those are the, oh yeah, so, and then I put this in because it's a banner project that one of my students did and, um, 
it has a reference to COVID, and but not in terms of being so much of a memorial as being just the physical a physical way of calling attention to individuals by placing um, banners of them in uh, communities. And I've seen this done in many, many small towns across the country for um, people that have fallen in foreign wars. Um, you find them a lot in, in rural communities um, that uh, community gets together and they, they make a banner project. And to remember people going all the way back to the First World War maybe even further than that. And I find that kind of interesting as a way, it's a little bit more, I guess one of the things about it, it's a little bit more, it lasts a little bit longer than, than some of the other kinds of temporary things. And, um, and people see it when they're driving, of course. So anyway, that's my, I mean, I've just dredged some things up here for you to talk about and look at and, and think about, um, it, yeah. All right, thanks, dude. I'd just love to share one one more image, um, if I may, and I did without asking permission. So I guess I'm... <laughs> so uh, it was the it was the mural in Detroit that had me um, on the phone with Owens and in India and others thinking about um, about you know how we might go about our own version of this. And I just wanted to share that, that this project is ongoing. So now th this is a gigantic banner that has all of the faces now gathered into a pho photo mosaic. And so I just wanted to share that as well because I, I found the simplicity of that Detroit um, drive-by memorial so powerful. And mm -hmm. I'm, um, I was so I was so deeply moved by that that I just I just wanted to keep thinking about it. And so, in the conversations that I've had more recently, um, people have talked about, of course, the absence of grief. So the drive-by memorial gives an opportunity for uh, mourning collectively, whether it's a loss in our own family or a loss in our community or just the kind of the general loss that people are experiencing in this moment, and to come together for that. But what well, I mean, one thing that Jasmine said, and also that an, another one of my collaborators said, is that, you know, how how do we go about creating opportunities for people to both grieve and to have some access to healing? And so yeah. um, I haven't had a chance to talk to the reference I got in Durham of a person who's working on how the arts can play a role in healing in this particular moment in storytelling, but I'll continue to pursue that a little bit, but there have been some, you know, the question of how we might do a memorial, such as some of these, these very moving, repetitive, re repetitive, rhythmic, um, the fact that there are so many people that we're losing, 231 people in Forsyth County now, how, how do we, how do we go about, you know, recognizing the, the scale of that loss, but also the individuals who are lost? And are there ways that we can we can lean on the arts as a tool for helping us mourn and helping individuals grieve their losses in their families and in their circles of loved ones? Um, you know, are there are there artists who are working on questions of grief in our midst? <laughs> Asked Jasmine that question, and she answered yes. In fact, I am working on a project, an art project that has to do with mourning and with grief, and and so. That is just another, like the, the way to involve the community at this time that we can't stand near each other and uh, wipe each other's tears off. It, it felt like there might be ways that we could think about, about connections through art making or connections through experiencing art. Um, so I thought maybe a coalition of different kinds of thinkers and workers, including artists, but also maybe, you know, mental health care workers. And, mm -hmm. I, I'm also thinking that when I see that uh, the piece with all the little white flags, um, you know, we, we spend so much time focusing on what was lost um, that we could also compare it to what survived um, and what transitioned into a, another part of, of, of these people's lives. Um, that might be something that's worth 
putting into the mix as well uh, that that bit of hope that goes along with the uh, um, this overwhelming loss. I got a question. Um, well, something I thought about. Um, we got all kinds of parts of the community. You know, one part of the community that's really suffering is the business community. And a lot of times I, I've been on these things, and we're not talking about the business community at all. And how I thought about celebrating that because having had someone die and going through all of that is you could create a lot of times. I was in this diner and I really thought about it, and there was a lot of tables with nobody at the table. You know, they had the sign there that um, you couldn't sit there. And a lot of community, you know, I've talked to a few owners and a few owners are willing to put up, pop up people, and then you buy that person a drink or you buy that person a dinner as a part of, you know, a collective body of work that's going on with other people that's doing it. I can't do it because I'm on the committee itself. But a lot of business communities have ideals where we can bring them in and they could be a part of the conversation as well. But one thing I know is, you know, if I had someone that was lost, um, you could buy that person, you could buy a drink for another person in that person's name. It's like, if I wasn't here because of COVID, you know, hey, Owens is not here, but he's in heaven, he's buying you a drink. You know, some people call it pass on. But that is a way that everybody could get involved with sharing this all at one time. And so, you know, you could buy a ticket or you could buy dinner or you could buy something and it's, and it's in that person's name, you know, and the business community and maybe Jason is, is a better person than I am about, you know, the logistics of that. But that's one idea that I want to propose for that. So, you know, to be clear about that, that, you know, and I was at this place and I thought, man, you know, the guy I know, he, you know, if he was here, he'd have bought me a drink. And I said, well, why can't that be a public arts work to where you contact businesses, businesses could sign up, you come in and you bought a ticket and it's got that person name on it and you could play it forward by buying a meal, buying a drink, but whatever it is, shops could get involved with it as well. And then on that ticket is the person's name, a little bit of information about that person, you know, whatever it is. But that's what I thought about. Hmm. Versus I've seen the mural, I've seen the white flags, I've, I've seen the drive-by, and we're talking about other cities, but we're Winston-Salem. We're the city of the arts. Um, we got the Arts Council on here, we got the business community on here, and I want to do something that says Winston-Salem. Not Detroit, not D.C., not New York, because they're already doing it. They're already doing it. And so, you know, that's my contribution to the conversation. Really, I, um, I think that's really interesting. I, I feel like whatever happens needs to have two pieces. I mean, because I, after our conversation, I was like, I, uh, so my initial reaction to with my conversation with Betsy was that I liked the uh, the drive the driving and but I could see between images of faces pieces of art that either honored statistics or honored uh, specific places in Winston that were affected or honored you know kind of the the totality scope and so you could have that kind of design component with with all these different pieces. Um, and I actually like the idea that other cities are doing it in the sense that this COVID's just interconnected web and some kind of like, is there a way to tether yourself, even if it isn't identical to other, other cities for that, you know, human piece. But I think what I like about what Owens is saying is that there's this, this financial loss and the reaction to COVID has been mutual aid work and how to bring in the sort of mutual aid aspect of COVID, which I think is the hopeful thing. The hopeful thing is I've had people say, hey, I'll give you groceries. I've had people say, hey, how can I help you? Um, or how can I help someone who lost something? I feel like that mutual aid part is the, you know, the thing that sort of kept me going is seeing ways people have helped each other. Um, before Owen talked, I was going to say that I, um, I also, I don't know how to do this, but I, I, I kind of wish that there were um, ways for people to engage to the work that is made 
So one of the things about the traditional like uh, memorial walls is that people can like bring stuffed animals to them and people can bring pictures of their loved ones to them. And I think that's the aspect of grieving and not having funerals that people really, really miss is that they're, you know, off trying to go to work some, somehow during the pandemic, you know, my partner's a mutual, uh, uh, an essential worker. So like, they're trying to do all these things now that's monumentally harder, but there's no space for them to come and bring themselves to something. Hmm. Yeah, great gonna... comments, great comments. Thank you so much, Jasmine. Those are those are really good. That's really thoughtful. I, I agree with you, Owens, in some ways. It's really great. Winston-Salem should have something that's unique and in, in its own, too. I, I, I sympathize with that. I like it. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't. I, we don't have to have any clear direction or anything for this today. Um, and I don't know. You know, I've been I haven't been keeping track of, of what you have to do, Kelly. If there's anything more, but um, I guess. Uh, I mean, that was just that was just the idea uh, today to kind of see if an idea jumped out at you all that you wanted to carry forward or to other options would be to form a committee, spend a couple of people off who, who uh, want to work on this and come up with some ideas, or you could all um, think on it some more. Um, you, know, I, um, you know, I hate to say I don't think that we're at the end of this, uh, so you probably have time. And, um, you know, it might be something to discuss again next month. I think it would probably be better if we formed a committee to look at it and to bring other other voices in. Um, I think Betsy mentioned, you know, somebody from the you know, medical or um, counseling community. Good suggestion. Yeah. I agree that it's probably more likely that we will move. I imagine that there are others in in the arts community as well who would want to you know to contribute ideas and contribute energy to this. Um, the last time we talked about it, Owens had mentioned. I think this was in this this group that Owens had mentioned. You know, people who were leading um, and organizing Black Lives Matter protests this summer and into the fall might. You know, there's already some organizational structures in place. Yeah. That, that some some of those folks might want to um, participate in this kind of thing. And, and I mean, it feels like there are more questions that, like even if we did something um, very, very simple, there, there are so many questions that need to be um, asked and dug into. Um, it, it does seem like time Time would need to be dedicated to it, um, even though we do have time, unfortunately, as Kelly says. Um, I, I, I don't know if we would want to do a call for artists to have some someone design this project or if we feel like we have funds to contribute to that. It, it seems like a proposal probably needs to be shaped before Ooh. we really know what it is that we're doing. Um. To, uh, you all can volunteer, a couple of you, to be the center of a committee, or I can, um, I'm happy to send out an email later uh, after this meeting um, and get some volunteers that way if you want to think it over. Yeah, I'd like to serve. Darren. Yeah. I'll serve. Darren. Um, okay. Yeah, I kind of agree with uh, Betsy. I sort of feel like maybe we should ask the community to come, to give, pr propose ideas for um, for this. I mean, I feel like we're a really small little think tank, but you know, we should bring in the community as soon as possible um, to help out. I mean, I'm sitting here torn between 
Owen's ideas and other ideas and, oh, wouldn't that be great? And I'm like, oh, wow, I've, you know, it just becomes a big mushy head up here at times when I start thinking about it and the emotions that are involved and the, the positiveness and the loss and, you know, so, you know, I really like that idea if we can figure out a way to, you know, pull in an artist from the community to help us with this would be great and pay them once again <laughs> our artists are also hurting in the community they need they need working capital as well so anyway just a thought okay i i'd like to not i'd like to serve on uh on this group maybe not leave but serve To, to Jane's point, um, I think the reason that we're having a hard time and there's multiple different, completely different ideas floating around is that we don't, we're not doing the, what we usually do with a call to artists and with these, you know, um, aspects of a particular project brought forward and and we don't, we're not sitting around like we usually do saying, well, I like that one, but I don't like this one. And so that if, if you have, if you make it more of a standard um, way of doing uh, the way the public art committee does things, you might have a better chance of it actually going through. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I think, Elizabeth, I think that getting to that point requires this is how it starts and then the committee right. can identify and even be able to write the proposal um you know like i i'm just taking owen's idea it's not a standard sort of public art person that would be doing that that would be a really intense community involvement and business community involvement which um maybe something that's something really unique and different so I think hey, this is a first step. This is the first step to put a group together to talk about this and to try to figure out what the best way of doing it is. And I think you're right. I think it probably would require somebody from outside of our group to actually be the person to organize it. But we would have to be really, you know, I think supposedly we're the ones that have the kind of the general ideas and, and the, the direction for this, right? So I think if we involve other people in the, in the initial talks, this is how we came up with the portrait project. And I think it was, but the only, the only hesitation that I have is that it will take, it takes time. And I think that I would imagine that by the time you can really get a handle on writing a, a a description of what we would want that might even be in the summer and it everything has been changing so fast that i think we'll we would find that that is the situation so um that's my only caution on it is to be able to have something that would last for a little for a little while and, and would be a, in response um that would make sense you know um uh, I'll just say that, you know, the loss is something that um, continues for a long time and mourning continues for a long time. And life goes on and life is going to go back to being normal. And we're all going to want to forget about this. But the people who have suffered through it and the people who have lost people, they're the ones that need that. They're the ones that need this because they won't, they, they can't just go, go on to normal. You can't go on to normal life again. So somehow that that's a complicated that's a complicated thing to acknowledge and to work with. So I just had to say that. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. Well, so that's people. I've got too, I've got way too much to do right now. That's, that's fine. I don't. I. It's it's as we know. It's harder and harder to get meetings scheduled with bigger groups. So, um, Dara, Owens, Betsy, perfect. Um, 
we'll get something, get something on the calendar and maybe bring, bring some other people in after, after an initial meeting. Um, the school district partnership, um, it's on the agenda under future projects discussions. Um, yeah, with the idea being to possibly set up a committee on that oh, or, or have, some, have some future discussion or maybe bring the school district into a, a bus shelter project. Um, did you all wanna discuss that or did you wanna talk, um, you know, wait on uh, the bus shelters to see, to see if there was one that could fit well with with that project, so for some overlap. Anyone have some ideas on that? Or are we, that seems like something that we have brought up and seemed like, you know, has a lot of potential It's possible there might be some um, connection between the, the memorial discussion and this as well. Maybe it's, uh, yeah, because I think that was uh, also a bit of what India had talked about. It was general mourning over this time um, from uh, high school students and students in general. Mm -hmm. Um. I think, you know, that's something that's also something that, that working with um, schools is something that should be an ongoing uh, concern of ours and something that we can, we can do um, going forward. Um, I don't know if we have time to, I, we don't have a direction today or a time today to maybe talk about it so much, but something that uh, we probably should take some steps uh, whether and to, to figure out whether the bus shelters would be the way to do it. Certainly, if we if we put our we probably should figure out um, maybe next time figure out where we're going to put our energy. I guess because I mean we're li we've got limited amounts of energy to to spend on the conception of these projects. We probably can't do more than one at a time. I'm just guessing with everything else that we're engaged in. So I think it would be, uh, you know, smart if we think about this, and if the committee that's working on the um, on the group uh, on the uh, memorials, or we'll just call it the COVID pro a COVID project, could could um, work on that. I think that um, that's sort of a um, it has a compelling presence right now because of what's going on. I would say, and I'd say that the school uh, schools project can be that might mesh with that, but it, but it's something that we can be a perennial thing that we could that we can keep looking at um, down the line. Does that make sense in terms of energy? I think it does to me. Um, one other thing I wanted to bring up today: um, one of the items in the public art plan was to develop a map of public art and um, I sent out a Google Doc or PDF of map types that I looked at. They basically broke down into two types, uh, one being a, let's see, one being an online interactive type Um, such as this one. <laughs> Kelly does the, um, would, <laughs> would, um, would the uh, the planning department be at all capable of of working with the the 
ESRI or the GIS of, for doing this? Yes, yes, they would. Um, so this this is this is one that a lot of uh, public art commissions have done, um, where you have you have the map on the right, and then you have uh, information on the left side with a picture of the project. Um, this is something they said that they could do it would take some time, but. Um, they'd be able to, to do something like this. Um, there's also um, more standard like PDF walking maps. Um, that could be uh, something to put together as well. But, um, you know, if it's, it kind of depends on whose projects we're highlighting. So if it's, if it's Winston-Salem, Forsyth County Public Art Commission projects, you know, there's only a few, few downtown, even though there's a lot of art downtown. Um, so I'd recommend probably doing, doing the online map for hours, um, and then maybe doing, maybe in the future, working with somebody like the downtown partnership or somebody like that or the arts council to do like an arts tour map, like a walking tour map, which would be something like something like this one. Yeah, or, or even bringing in um, visit Winston Salem. Visit Winston Salem. Yep. Yeah. I think the uh, the PDF map is a uh, is a good place to start, but I think we should work up to something that's more interactive, um, that that we could have a little more <clears throat> robust uh, descriptions and uh, historical information and information about the artist. Yeah. Well, I'd be happy to get our GIS people started on on the you know the interactive map. We're just you know kind of let them know it's coming <laughs> and uh, kind of get going on on that. If you all would like to go in that direction, I think that would be a good place to start, and and um, maybe to, for them to do a sample of a small of a of a group of pieces and show us what that would be like, and then we could take a look at it and and critique it and 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 give them some feedback about it. Okay. Yeah. I know it's a big it's a big enterprise, so I wouldn't want somebody to just go and do it and then have us say, oh, you know. <laughs> And it would also have to be thinking about how that would be distributed, how people would know about it, and so on. Yeah. But it, and and nowadays, most of that is also usually friendly for the for phones as well, which is obviously really important. It makes the walking around part of it work in order to have the location for it. Yeah. Okay. Well, That'd be great, Kelly. And I have um, some other things to share. So uh, project reports, very briefly, the memory wall contracts are out. Um, once those start coming back, uh, we'll get the money from, to, from with Sika to help pay the, pay the artists um, as well as the city. Um, downtown sculpture, you know, we had selected the design. Um, she has her contract and um, the design, the fabrication RFP should go out this month, hopefully. It's the Salem Portrait Project, still on track for April. Um, Keisha is visiting uh, at the end of January to kind of look at the site and um, you know, have some decisions made on exactly its placement. Um, now, let's see. You, 
may remember back a long time ago, we had a project for the Kernersville Library. And we had a bike rack and another and a sculpture. This is the bike rack. You'll notice that it's not in the place where we were supposed to have it near the entrance. Um, but it was installed there and promptly rusted all over their new sidewalk. <laughs> so they moved it. <laughs> they moved it to this rocky area uh, that's not too far away from the entrance so that it could rust all it wanted to. Um, but it's in the shape of uh, honeycomb with a bee on it and uh, Hopefully it'll be well used. Uh, but the main project um, there is going to be this big sculpture in the courtyard. Let's see. And it's underway. She is sculpting. So it's this giant person bench. Um, And she sent me a few pictures. The material? It's uh, like dolomatic limestone. And uh, I'd like to see a video of how she does it because she's <laughs> she has like handheld circular saws with like diamond bits on them. And she just kind of just digs in. Yeah, wow. <laughs> um, and then these book stacks, she does these uh, book stacks as other other pieces of the sculpture. Yeah, here's what you can see one of the one of the saws. <laughs> so she's off in her studio. She thinks it might be ready by March. So. Great. Does anybody have any questions on those things? Um, I've noticed that we had some other folks at the meeting. Here, let me stop the screen share. Um, who may want to speak in the public comment period. Um, you can type in the chat and let me know or, um, or raise your hand and we'll put you in, put you in order or if not, um, that's fine as well. But I see Alexander Brown. Um, Jasmine, you were here with Betsy, um, Sherry, and Wendy. Let me know if you if there's anything you need if you, you'd like to say for the public comment period. Okay. I'm just listening. Uh, nothing, nothing to add. Okay. Okay. Just making sure. Um, all right. Well, hearing, hearing them. Um, Wendy says she's excited to hear about the new project. It's great. Thanks, Wendy. Thanks, everybody. Uh, if there are no, if nobody wants to take any time to, on the on the silt box. I think we can adjourn our, our meeting, but thank you folks that are not part of the committee for, for coming. Um, we'd love to ha hear you, have you be here and, and love to hear your ideas. Thanks for joining us, Jason and Cliff. Happy New Year, everybody. Yes, Jason and Cliff, welcome. And um, 
just just for one since we have one or two minutes if you do you jason or cliff do you have any questions uh about the committee or about anything that we could answer in a few few quick minutes um we've been involved in public art tangentially or otherwise for a long time so i think i think all i need is just uh just to be caught up on all the um all the projects that i haven't been part of um and just you know get up to speed so but other than that i'm happy to be on board yeah i'll be onboarding you giving you the orientation uh soon we'll set that up cliff and uh does that, does that come with the official tote bag <laughs> yes yes <laughs> the pac tote bag yeah and um i want to say thank you for including me and kelly was uh gave me an order last week and I found it very uh, interesting. I've been following the work of the Public Art Commission and have been a champion of its creation. And um, so, um, you know, just kind of from my place at the Downtown Partnership, I'm probably pretty familiar with some of the work that you guys do. And um, so, you know, I kind of followed along and was, you um, it seemed like most of the questions that I would have were um, already brought up. And and I, I did feel compelled to say that I think the, um, the COVID memorial is, you know, that's one that I per perceive from where I sit as a very difficult, uh, but not insurmountable um, process of public art. It's a, it's, a, it's a daunting task, but one that I think is important to uh, undertake. Thanks, thanks, Jason. And Jason, Jason, by the way, was involved from the very beginning trying to get public art. This was more than ten years ago that you really, you really um, were really involved in this. So I want to thank you for that. I'm so glad you're with us. Great. Thank you. Yeah. All right. I think we we stand adjourned. Is that okay, Kelly? That sounds that sounds right to me. Thanks everybody. We'll see you in the